When her Spotlight record was released in 1971, many thought the name of the LP referred to Richard Nixon. Some thought it was Adolf Hitler. But has the real subject of Bernie Toppin's title ever been revealed? On this episode, we explore the brilliant rock and roll psychosis, and we unbox the Man Man Across the Water 50th Anniversary Super Deluxe 3 CD box set of Elton John's Slow Rising Classic, coming up next on Professor of Rock. Hey, music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You know, if you want the stories behind the soundtrack of your life, the story of the songs that you grew up with, that have been in the background of the hallmarks of your personal history, make sure to subscribe below right now and click the bell so that you're always in the know. We also have a Patreon. We're going to want to check that out. Uh, we have more content there, exclusive content for you. That's the best way to support us and keep this a daily channel. Madman Across the Water. Bernie Toppin wrote the song about a lunatic who lashed out during a day for visitors at the asylum that he was confined to. Toppin is one of the truly gifted lyricists of the rock era who can find words to a song in any situation. But even Elton John, his longtime collaborator, was taken aback when Bernie handed him a song sheet with a title that read, Man Man Across the Water. I'm sure Elton's first thought was that Bernie had gone mad. The song Madman Across the Water became the title track for Elton's fourth studio album, a long play that evolved into a latent classic. Similar to other brilliant albums that were you know, commercial disappointments when they were first released, Madman Across the Water initially performed under expectations, but it slowly gathered the highest of praise as one of Elton John's best albums, and that's saying something. Like a fine wine, Madman Across the Water has aged exquisitely over the last 50 years. The sincerity is more resonant, uh, the musicianship just richer, and the storytelling more textured and fortifying. The progression of the album's legacy reminds me of other albums that were late bloomers. Uh, Beach Boys, 66 Opus Pet Sounds. We come on this loop, John B. The Bird Sweetheart of the Rodeo, uh, from 68. Or the Kinks are the Village Green Preservation Society from the Kinks, also released in 68. We are the Draft Beer Preservation Society. Now, speculation abounded about the title of the album when it was released on November 5th of 1971. Some believe the title was a reference to Richard Nixon, who was more than halfway through his first term as U.S. president at the time. He's a crook. Well, I'm not a crook. I've earned everything I've got. Others were convinced the title was about Adolf Hitler, perhaps the, the most infamous madman in history. Uh, Bernie Toppin found it all amusing, stating that the title didn't refer to either of the infamous men and was actually about no one in particular. Still, the title and uh, Toppin's dark lyrics made the song a spine-tingling story. I'll recite verse 3. The ground's a long way down, but I need more. The ground's a long way down, but I need more. Is the nightmare black or are the windows painted? Is the nightmare black or are the windows painted? Will they come again next week? Can my mind really take it? I'm always mesmerized by the line, is the nightmare black or are the windows painted? This is one of my, my favorite lines from the great Bernie Toppin. There's so many. Uh, then consider the mysterious and neurotic chorus of Mad Man Across the Water. We'll come again next Thursday afternoon. We'll come again next Thursday afternoon. The in-laws hope they'll see you very soon. But is it in your conscience that you're after? But is it in your conscience that you're after? Another glimpse of the madman across the water. Who do you think it's about? Let me know in the comments. Water. 
Mad Mad Across the Water was originally intended to be included on Elton's third album, Tumbleweed Connection, where Mick Ronson would have been the primary musician. Uh, it was re-recorded as the title of the fourth album with Davy Johnstone. Uh, he was on lead guitar, and that led to a career role for the young Mr. Johnstone. Uh, only 19 years old, he became a core member of the Elton John Band and has played more than 3,000 shows with the Rocket Man since 1971. Tonight is his 3,000th show with me. The dramatic string section of Mad Mad Across the Water was orchestrated by another trusted Elton John collaborator, the revered Paul Buckmaster, the late Paul Buckmaster. Uh, Buckmaster's string arrangement swirls through the bridge into a frenzied tempest before fading into the horizon like the, the calm after a storm. Mad Mad Across the Water, the song, is one of the best examples of the incredible tandem of Elton John and Bernie Toppin because it, it demonstrates how instinctive they are as collaborators. Toppin writes this unorthodox tale of a mentally unstable person, and somehow Elton knows exactly how to interpret his writing with an uncanny narration. And then he writes music that perfectly illuminates the scene for us to, to visualize everything in the theater of our minds. It's no wonder that Elton stated he feels most connected to Mad Men Across the Water than any other track on this album. Take my word on the madman, don't you know? Another captivating story on Mad Men Across the Water is the depth track Razor Face, one of my favorites. Uh, it's a song about a lovable transient whose distinctive countenance outlines a colorful past. I feel that Razor Face is a homeless musician whom the narrator either jammed with or watched perform a long time ago. In the song, Razor Face is getting old, sleeping wherever he can find a place to lie down with nothing to look forward to, but simply surviving another day. Has anybody here seen Razor Face hurt his back? Elton's vocal on Razor Face is truly inspired and deserving of special commendation. Looking for a place to lay down. He injects compassion and sympathy for Razor Face as someone that he feels true affection for with a range of octave and emotional shifts over a bluesy full band arrangement. Jack Engelbaum playing the accordion was an interesting choice on Razor Face. It gave the song a rustic feel. Hall of Fame keyboardist Rick Wakeman delivered the organ fills. Caleb Quay provided the guitar licks. David Glover was on bass. And Roger Pope played the drums. And now Holiday Inn is a song on Mad Men Across the Water that has been adopted by many traveling musicians because it's such a relatable account of the rigors of being on the road. For the rock and rollers who've discovered it, Holiday Inn has become a sort of pilgrimage. It describes the, the monotony of endless touring where every city begins to, to look the same and boredom starts to set in until you get on stage to perform, that is. Toppin's tongue-in-cheek lyrics really boil down to the fact that life on the road is not as glamorous as one might think. You ain't seen nothing until you've been in a motel, baby. Like the Holiday Inn. Baby, like the Holiday Inn. I did a Professor Rock Live show recently with Kevin Cronin of Ario Speedwagon, and uh, he opened the show with this song. It meant a lot to him as he was uh, growing as a musician. The songs from Mad Men have no doubt had a, a massive impact on many artists that have come after, you know, from Bruce Hornsby to, to Ben Folds and beyond. Although they weren't big hits from a chart perspective, the singles from Mad Men Across the Water are two of Elton's greatest. Leave On was the lead single from Mad Men Across the Water and another interesting Bernie Toppin character portrayed by the voice of Elton John. Leave On sells cartoon balloons in town. Leave On reaped the financial benefits of running a family balloon business with his son, Jesus. Uh, together, business was good, but deep inside, they longed for something else. 
like a balloon sailing into the sky. Jesus wants to fly away, rising to new heights and faraway places, uh, leaving his father and the business behind. It's fine, the business but he could not escape the confines of his obligations. Uh, as Jesus watched the balloons fly by, so did his life, while his father, Levon, slowly died. Levon, Levon slowly dies. Once again, there was conjecture about Bernie Taupin's song title. Since Bernie and Elton were big fans of the band, it was natural to assume that the song was named after Levon Helm, the beloved drummer and co-lead vocalist for the band. Uh, even producer Gus Dudgeon, uh, he claimed that the song was a tip of the hat to Levon Helm. However, Bernie Taupin answered that Helm was not the subject of Levon. It was just a name that he liked and one that fit his freeform writing style. Taupin also revealed that Alvin Tostig, uh, that was mentioned in the song as being Levon's father, was also fictitious. Oh, Alvin Tostig, Toppin was perpetually cagey about song meanings, of course, and enjoyed hearing how the fans interpreted his lyrics. He was nebulous about Levon, but it seems that an image or a particular happening in his life or Elton's would trigger an idea for a song. It's part of the fascination that surrounds a Toppin John composition. Bernie had a, a genius stream of consciousness. Uh, while Elton could bring any of his characters, real or imagined, into life for the listener to understand and apply to their own experiences. Levon sparked controversy with its Christian overtones by name-checking Jesus, along with Jesus' symbolism, such as the observation wearing his war wound like a crown. That yeah, was in the opening verse. Levon wears his war wound like a crown. In the pre-chorus of Levon, Elton sings, he was born a pauper to a pawn on Christmas day when the New York Times said, God is dead and the war has begun. He was born a pauper to a pawn on a Christmas day. Doing some research on that topic, I found that there was a headline. In the New York Times reading God is Dead in the March 24, 1988 edition of the newspaper, with the actual headline reading God is Dead Doctrine Losing Ground to Theology of Hope. When the New York Times said God is dead and the world's begun. There have been smaller articles with similar headings, but nothing was posted on Christmas Day as recounted in Levon, at least not in the New York Times. Still, it is plausible that Bernie saw a God is dead and the war has begun banner in some context, and he tucked it away in his subconscious to use, you know, when the spirit moved him. Paul Buckmaster conducted another dramatic orchestral arrangement teaming up with David Katz. The second single from Mad Man Across the Water was the charming nostalgia of Tiny Dancer. Toppin romanticizes the first time that he and Elton came to America and specifically captures the spirit of Southern California, which was very different from what they grew up with in England. It was a magical adventure for Bernie and Elton, who were barely in their early 20s. Uh, the sunshine was an intoxicating change for the frequently uh, gloomy sky over the United Kingdom, and the California women had a free spirit that they didn't know existed. Baby. We covered this in depth uh, about a half a year ago, but the song is about Maxine Feibelin, who eventually became Bernie's first wife. Maxine was a ballerina as a young girl, and she used to sew patches on Elton's jackets and jeans. The L.A. lady was indeed the seamstress for the band. Seamstress for the band. Despite Elton's growing popularity, Tiny Dancer met resistance from AM radio programmers because of Jesus Freaks Out in the Street, that lyric. Jesus Freaks Out in the Street. And of course, the length of the song surpassing six minutes didn't help. Consequently, Tiny Dancer came to a halt at number 41 on the Billboard Hot 100 and installed at number 70 in the UK. But the song, like the LP uh, that it originated from, emerged years later. No. 
An Elton John Bernie Taupin signature achievement if there ever was one. As I mentioned, Madman Across the Water is just jam-packed with world-class musicians. A Tiny Dancer, for example, featured background vocals from a singer who had more top 40 hits in 1970 than the Jackson 5, Sly and the Family Stone, Simon and Garfunkel, or any other of the hottest acts of that year. Talking about Tony Burroughs, who was nicknamed the voice that launched a thousand hits. Uh, besides sharing his talent on the two hit singles from Madman Across the Water, uh, Levon and Tiny Dancer, Tony was the lead vocalist on the smash pop ditties Love Grows Where My Rosemary Grows, United We Stand, Gimme Dat Ding, and My Baby Needs Lovin', all of those in 1970. Madman Across the Water, in its original vinyl format, is already a treasured collector's item. Got it right there. It's one of uh, Robert Demery's 1001 albums you must hear before you die. But now this amazing timeless recording is part of a 50th anniversary deluxe set that includes a three CD super deluxe set, a four LP set, and the original LP on limited edition colored vinyl. Uh, we're unboxing the three CD version today. It's beautifully concealed in a very thick box here representing the album cover with a four-way gatefold containing the three CDs and a Blu-ray. Uh, they're packaged in different sleeves, one for each page. And CD1 is the Man Man Across the Water remastered album, plus five additional tracks, including an extended version of Razor Face and also a live radio broadcast of the song Indian Sunset. CD2 is my favorite. It has all the piano demo versions of Man Man Across the Water, a plus previously unheard full version of Rock Me When He's Gone. Uh, CD3 contains the BBC Sounds for Saturday Concert, First broadcast in 1972 with tracks from the album. And uh, uh, disc four is the elegant Blu-ray. It's the audio of 5.1 mix of Man Man Across the Water, a visual of BBC Sounds for Saturday, and 1971 Old Grey Whistle Test performance. An amazing listen for sure. The box set includes a 104-page hardcover book with introductions by Elton and Bernie, photos and essays featuring interviews with many who helped make Man Man Across the Water. It has the curated history of the record in detail. I love the book. Uh, this is a priceless gift from the, that legendary duo. Plus there's a reproduction 1971 poster, as well as memorabilia and artwork taken from the Rocket Archive. For me, the best part of the 50th anniversary deluxe edition of Man Man Across the Water is the CD, like I said, CD2 with Elton's piano demos for all nine tracks, including a 1970 and 1971 piano demo of Man Man Across the Water. Elton developed the music for all those amazing songs from his piano, transforming Bernie's handwritten novellas into a classic rock oeuvre. Get your copy by clicking on the link below. Hey, leave us a comment about this masterpiece from the 70s. What are your memories of the great songs from Levon to Tiny Dancer to the title track, some of the more obscure tracks like Razor Face? Also, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you never miss out on our daily videos. And make sure again, to get your copy of the 50th Anniversary Super Deluxe Editions below. If you want the LP version, you can get that. We'll link to both. Uh, make sure to, to look us up on Patreon as well. Join us to help us keep the music alive. That's what we're here for. Until next time, three chords and the truth.